Heartline of Toyota North America, and we're going to talk about the Prius uh, plug-in electric car as well as Toyota's general move towards being more sustainable. And we do have the highest average MPG of any automaker, any full-on manufacturer, right? Any full-on manufacturer. Yeah. And uh, so let's talk about first of all electric versus hydrogen. Is there a battle? I mean, what's going on? Like, I mean, do we all need Some both? people like to think so, don't they? You know what? Toyota's approach is to have a portfolio of products and advanced technologies because we believe that people have different driving needs and a lot of these advanced technologies will serve different needs and um, fit into customers', customers lives in different ways. So we're exploring plug-in technology, pure battery electric, as well as hydrogen. We have the Prius plug-in behind me that's been on the road since early this year. We have the RAV4 EV pure battery electric that went on sale in September of this year, and we're bringing the hydrogen fuel cell vehicle to the market in 2015. Okay. So we're going to have a variety of options. We don't think there's going to be one silver bullet or one winner for any of the Exactly. And then by 2015, I know uh, Hyundai was saying they think that the hydrogen fuel cell will be ready for mass market, whereas right now they think it's really more of a fleet option. And so by 2015, you'll be able to go to the general market with that. Well, our plan is to come to market with, in 2015 with the vehicle. Um, the key is going to be infrastructure, right. and that's probably why they said that about yeah. fleets because they have the ability to have the in place. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 so that's something that you know all the OEMs are working on right now is expansion of hydrogen infrastructure as we all come closer to the market with these vehicles. Absolutely. And then um, as far as longer range electrics, I mean, they're getting better and better all the time, and I know you guys are really tight with Tesla and you've developed a lot with them. Now, what about like maybe sort of using their superchargers? I mean, it just seems kind of cool to be able to plug in and half an hour later, you're Plus on your way. Plus, it's just called supercharger. Is it's exactly. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> Well, the first project that we had with Tesla is the RAV4 EV that went on sale in September. And that was a really great collaboration, and we learned a lot about each other as companies because we're very different. <laughs> like any marriage. Like any marriage, exactly. But it was a really great partnership, and I think the resulting vehicle is amazing. The RAV4 electric vehicle is, is absolutely one of the best drives I've had all the time. So, moving forward, you know, we're going to be continuing to explore that partnership, explore that relationship, and we'll see what happens. Awesome. Yeah. Cool. And then, um, so what sort of range, like, what are you doing to address range anxiety among consumers? You know, because everyone says, like, oh, but I need my range. Right, right, right. Even though, really, most of the time, they don't need all that much. So. But people like to know they have it. Yeah. You know, even if you don't use it, that's very, you know, most people, that's kind of the mindset. Um, the RAV4 EV is EPA rated at 103 miles, but in my driving, I'm getting closer to like 120. Oh my god, that's great. Yeah, Whereas me, so. I'd probably get 20. Well, and I have a horrible lead foot, so oh, wow. if I'm getting that that's kind amazing. of mileage out of it, yeah, it, it's a really amazing vehicle. Yeah. Um, one of the things that we're doing as far as range anxiety is we offer the pure battery electric one drive for EV, but we also have the Prius plug-in, right. which has about 13 miles, 13 to 15 miles of pure electric range, which for most people would cover around town driving, most commutes, or at least a large portion of your commute, and then if you run out of that all electric power, you've got a regular Prius behind you. So it's the car with no compromises, really. So if you really do suffer from range anxiety, a plug-in vehicle might be better for you because you're not constrained by the range limitations of your pure battery electric vehicle. Exactly. And then someone like me who wants a pure battery electric, I actually plugged in my Bramo Impulse when I was test riding it. Okay. Yeah, I had to unplug a Prius, uh, one of these plug-in hybrids. Shame on you. I know. Well, I'm I was like, he's got a gas tank! He's got a gas tank! What's he doing? stealing the but last But he can electricity. use all the, he can drive on all electric all the time if he wants to. That's the beauty That's all I had. Yeah. It's like, I need this to get home. Okay. In that case, yeah. I know. So, um, all right, so, what else do we want to address? Um, Basically, I mean, you've got a broad range of vehicles for a broad range of consumers. Right. You know, from you know, practical haulers, like one that can schlep the space shuttle around. Oh, yes. You know, and it did so, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that yeah, was pretty neat. Yeah, it was pretty cool. <laughs> you couldn't really, couldn't really do that in a pure electric. I don't think they really have that much. There's some serious torque. Right. Maybe you'd like, move off the line, but I don't know about the longevity of it. Right. I'm not sure. Yeah, <laughs> I, I know. But that was really impressive. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah. All right, cool. Um, so, is there anything else you want to add? Well, I think with all of the advanced technologies, you know, there's a lot of movement going on right now, a lot of momentum with uh, pure electrics, plug-ins, hydrogen's coming up the pipeline. So I really think the next few years are going to be very interesting because consumers ultimately are going to decide.
side, what's right for their lifestyle. Yeah. So it's a really exciting time right now to be in the industry because we're going to see a lot of advancements in these technologies over the next decade. Exactly. And actually, that was another thing I wanted to ask you about was pricing because um, it's really more about like how you communicate total ownership costs to the customer because to me that's the biggest issue with right. electric versus gas. People think, oh my god, this is stupid pricing, and that's all they look at. Right. And so how do you really get that across? I mean, some brands have on their website a whole total ownership cost calculator. And, yeah. And that's, you know, that's a key component with the advanced technology vehicles is educating the consumers on what's the true cost, what are the true benefits of the technology, and that's something that we are constantly working on. So, like you said, with pure battery electric, your sticker cost might be a little higher, but or usually it's higher, yeah. let's be honest. But overall fueling cost for the electric vehicle, you know, yeah. it's, that's going to offset. So, really, it's just continuing through our dealer network, through industry and trade shows and conferences, continuing to raise awareness and educate the general public about the benefits of these technologies. That's all it is. It's just a slow slaughter. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Thank you. Gotta keep